About 14 million Americans, including teens, become infected with HPV every year. If the HPV infection is not treated, it can cause certain types of cancer. A way to get ahead of the cancer caused by human papilloma virus is by vaccinating kids as early as nine years old. And here to talk a little bit about what that means is Sanford pediatrician, Dr. Stephanie Hansen. Thank you so much for coming in. I guess I want to just start with um, what HPV is, what the HPV vaccine is as well. Yeah. HPV is a virus. Uh, it's the most common sexually transmitted virus that's in our communities. Um, and a lot of people don't realize this, but uh, many think that up to 80% of people have contracted an HPV infection at some point in their life. So incredibly common. Uh, most of those infections clear on their own with no consequences to the, to the person, but there are a few strains of HPV that can cause cancer. So the HPV vaccine was developed as a way to offer some protection against those cancer-causing strains of HPV. Okay, people are, are going to ask, okay, we're talking about sexually transmitted diseases, but then now we're talking about nine-year-old you know, children. Yeah. But it's because we need to catch this before anyone's sexually active, right? Absolutely. Can you kind of expand on that? If you think about all of our vaccines, they are all given before the point that you come into contact with the infection. So flu vaccine, tetanus vaccine, uh, chicken pox vaccine, you want to give those early on so that when the individual comes into contact, they're protected and their immune system has developed a response. It, it seems obvious, but that's kind of where I think some people get caught up and yeah. they don't want to be involved in something that's, as soon as you say, sexually mm -hmm. transmitted uh, a virus or disease, then they get kind of caught up. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a list of all of the different cancers that can be caused by HPV. Can you talk a little bit about these? Yeah, well, the most common types of cancer I think that we think of is cervical cancer. That's, uh, you know, a very common type of cancer amongst women, very difficult to detect. And, and if you're not getting regular screening, uh, maybe very advanced by the time you, you reach detection. But people don't always realize HPV can also cause uh, penile cancer, can cause rectal or anal cancers. It's also one of the top causes of throat or oral cancer. Answers. So who should be getting this vaccine? Yeah, everybody, <laughs> boys and girls, um, unless you have some specific medical contraindication to receiving vaccine. Uh, this vaccine is recommended for all boys and girls, uh, can be given as young as nine, though we typically recommend it in that 11 and 12 year old age group. That's the time in your life where your immune system really responds well to the vaccine. You get, you know, kind of uh, a good response um, and it offers you kind of maximum protection and easier to get the vaccine than to treat an HPV-caused cancer. Absolutely. Uh, can you talk a little bit too, is it something that, do you have to have it two shots, one shot? Did you kind of mention that? Yeah, if you, if you began the HPV vaccine below the age of 15, you get two doses. Uh, if you get it after the age of 15, it's three doses. Okay. Uh, can we also talk a little bit about what questions you get from parents? Because this is kind of, it's died down a little bit. It was kind of a hot topic yeah. for a while. Are you still hearing from parents who are concerned or just have questions? Yeah, certainly. And, and I encourage parents to ask questions about, you know, my recommendations and, and what we're offering. And I'm happy to share with them, you know, the evidence and, and scientific information about it. Uh, I would say the most common question I get is, what are the side effects of HPV yeah. vaccine? And really, they're, they're quite typical and similar to the side effects of other vaccines. So you may have some soreness at the injection site. Uh, you may feel a little bit, a little bit of fatigue fatigue or a little, you know, a little headachey after the vaccine. And then some children uh, feel lightheaded, dizzy, or even faint just in that, you know, 15 or 20 minutes after receiving the vaccine. So when we give the vaccine in clinic, we have patients wait for about 15 minutes after they get the injection just to make sure they're feeling okay and then send them on their way. Okay, and I know that you did send a link ahead of time if parents want more information. Uh, I've added that to our hot button, so you can just yeah. go to valleynewslive.com and click on the hot button to find more information. Dr. Hansen, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. Stay with us coming up on North Dakota Today, the pros and cons of co-signing alone.